See? Now it's obvious that you haven't played a single snap in the preseason when you say something foolish like that. The worst team in the NFL will absolutely smoke the best college team every single year. <laughs> yeah, 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 whatever you say. Listen, if you still feel that the competition was tougher in college by after this Sunday, man, dinner is on me. I got you. And vice versa, deal? Last time we were out here, coaching staff didn't like what we You all know it wasn't good enough. So let's make up for that today and have a great one. I know you got it in you. So let me see that greatness come out on the field, all right? Let's do it. Let's go now. But this is it. We are going for gold. Joey slide out to kick off after the touchdown. Returning from his end zone is Ty Johnson. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. New York's offense back out there and set to go. They had a great drive going last time. They were moving the ball, and then all of a sudden it just stalled out. So we'll see what they can do here, Charles. And it's always easy to second guess when you don't get it on a fourth down try. But they had to like the feeling that they had going out offense. They want to continue to see if they can capture that again on this drive and maybe get in the same position. Yeah, and that's, I mean, like I said, they were moving the football. It's not like they went four and out, so I don't think it's a, a deal where the offense doesn't have confidence. No, I agree with you totally on that one. If, if anything, they may have gained more confidence. Okay, they stopped us once. That's all right. Let's keep moving it. Make them do it again. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. And he's only hit on two of his first six passes. Time for a quick quarter back regroup here with a big third down coming up on third down he'll drop to throw airing one out for Crowder oh he tries to force it in and it's intercepted Dante Jackson picks it and the Panthers are going to take over here up near the 40 second interception for him now here in this first half and you got to think he's a rookie Charles how much does confidence start to become a factor I think that's a great question because that's what they're going to check on when he gets to the sidelines the coach is going to check on his teammates are going to check on it because when you haven't done it before it's not something that's part of you you got to see how you're going to react. Let's see how he bounces back. Yeah, because two interceptions for him in college and a half, I mean, that just didn't happen. 
Another run with McCaffrey on second down. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. We remind you that coming up in two minutes, we'll again head down to visit with Jonathan Coachman in Orlando back for another year. He'll have scores from around the NFL here on this opening weekend. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there that brings up fourth. And on is the punter Charlton now as he's able to get this one away. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Draw play, Carter. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. And it's a rush to the line right now for the Jets. He's going to look deep now for Landry. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Dante Jackson picks it. And they will finally bring this run back to an end, but not before he's down inside the five-yard line at the four. But such a costly interception. Nearly a pick six, but now they're so close, they are knocking on the door for a touchdown. And I never want to get on any team for being aggressive because that's part of what their makeup is, and oftentimes it's successful. And he's going to... So we've reached halftime here on opening weekend. So we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome back to football, everybody. We've got a full slate of 16 games here to start the new season. So let's take our first trip around the NFL. We'll start up in Orchard Park, a couple of blue-collar cities doing battle. Pittsburgh at Buffalo. And it's the Bills with the lead in the second quarter. Cole Beasley, a touchdown reception. From there, we move to H-Town to check on the Texans at home at NRG Stadium. And they trail in that one as it's the visiting Jags who are out in front. James Robinson, over 100 yards on the ground with a pair of touchdown runs. Lastly, let's check in on our nation's capital to see what's happening with the Washington football team at home at FedEx Field. And it's the visiting L.A. Chargers who are out in front. Austin Eckler accounting for the lone scoring thus far as he's cashed in with a touchdown run. On now to a look at the next-gen stats in that first half for the Jets. And they weren't able to get a whole lot done throwing the football. That'll likely be a big key if they want to turn things around in the second half. Meanwhile, for the Panthers, we check out their numbers on the ground as they'll try to keep the momentum going into the second half. It's a new season, so both of these coaching staffs likely making plenty of adjustments after their first half of football. So for the call of the second half here in week one, we go back to Brandon and Charles. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. We'll see if week one fatigue becomes any kind of a factor as we are back underway in the second half. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. Out comes this field general once more, leading his offense back onto the field. And he's looking to take much better care of the football here in half two after three first-half interceptions. We don't have to just look strictly at the numbers here. You know what else happens to a team when you turn it over three times like that? It erodes confidence in you, and it erodes confidence in the offense. And now you have the defensive guys looking over and saying, what is going on here? And instead of playing for the team, they're playing angry and mad at their teammates. Second and nine now for the 21. They'll look to throw here. Buying time to his left. 
And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Let's go. Let's do it. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. Some early fireworks from this rookie quarterback getting the start in week one. And every time a rookie quarterback gets to start week one, you and I both know the extra attention that comes with it. We know that he's going to throw the football, but will he make the right decisions? And in this case, with his legs, he showed the defense there's an extra dynamic to his game. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Steps away to his left. That's pulled in the veteran Carter Landry. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. 27 yards there. He's had in his Longhorn days, but he showed a nice little burst after that catch. Almost like he had a little bit of a throwback there, huh, partner? Because while he was never really a burner, he did have the ability to outrun linebackers. And here, as you described, he looked like the 2014 Carter Landry. And he rumbled for a big game. And he'll get this to the 30-yard line before crossing over out of bounds. Ten more there and another first down. Something to watch here in week one of the season? Tackle. Because you and I both know that in the preseason, a lot of these guys don't play a whole lot. Plus, the intensity and the speed really ratchets up on opening week. On first down, he'll drop to throw. He'll dump this off to Carter complete. Give him seven on the play, and that'll make it second down. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Jeremy Chin picks it off. And the Panthers are going to have the football here at their own 18-yard line. So they elect to decline it. And why not? Just go ahead and let the play stand, and they'll take that. And the holding penalty sets them back inside the 20 as they get going on this drive. On first down, it's Darnold. Ertz has it left side. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. That's a good way to start the drive. 17 yards and a first down. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. McCaffrey with a first down and more. And finally taken down at the 44-yard line. It's another first down and that'll be a gain of 21 yards. This one was all about clearing space for this play to work because he's going to leak out of the backfield to his right and then angle his way up the field. And a really pretty throw to put it on him and create the big play downfield. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. A gain of three, second down. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only give... And he's going to be sacked. They sack him back right Let's at the go, midfield stripe. Ashton Davis, he's the one that got home and takes him down for a loss of nine. Well, nothing takes a start to have a good drive quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? No, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. From the 50, it's Darnold. Over the middle, that's complete to McCaffrey. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? And this is good. He got just enough to clear the crossbar as he drops it in from long distance. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. So the turnover leads to points as they add. Touchdown. And the Panthers. 
Panthers are closing in on a winning start to the year as they extend their fourth quarter lead. They're going to throw for the two with Darnold. And he's got it. So the two-point conversion is good, and they add on to their fourth quarter lead. So they go with the pass, and it works there on the two-point try. Charles, just in general, what are your thoughts passing versus running on two-point conversion? Situational? It is situational. You have to know your team. What is your strength? Because so many people think you have to throw the ball on a two-point conversion, but the stats will tell you that running it is about as proficient. So know your team and go to your strength. Back on offense, New York gets set to take over. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Well, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. On first and ten, it's Carter. Well, you said it earlier in the quarter when we saw a broken tackle then that we might see some missed tackles here early on in week one, and that's another one right there. Yeah, not a surprise at all. It will even out as the season extends because everyone will get used to the play speed. But right now, here in the early season, the advantage definitely goes to the offense. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. My first thought is surprise, because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? They work again from the 38 on second and 10. He'll look to throw. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Jeremy Chin picks it off, and the Panthers are going to get it back here. And you have to wonder, Charles, a game like this, five interceptions, what does this do to the psyche of a young quarterback? Well, based on the fact that he's still out there and he threw a fifth interception, I'm wondering if his head coach believes that he's really strong mentally and wants him to play through it. Because otherwise, you need to get him out and fight another day because this could leave lasting damage if he keeps throwing interceptions. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Again, they run. Again, it's McCaffrey. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. The Jets will bring in a nickel set as they try to stop this third down. Darnold now to throw. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Moore. And he is going to have the Panthers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I think it all came together there in breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. First down, this is McCaffrey. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. So this one is over. A victory for Carolina. And with that, our journey begins, Charles. Week one in the books. Going to be a great season. Oh, man, so much to look forward to. Isn't it nice to get a really good game right
Hey, what's up, bud? I know you're at practice right now. Just wanted to check in and let you know that as long as my flights are on time, I'll be at the stadium by kickoff on Sunday. Until then, I'm busy expanding my empire from one client to hopefully two. Wish me luck. Talk to you soon. Hey, greetings from LA, superstar. I just finished having some of the best sushi you could ever ask for, but I don't want to make you too jealous. But listen, I've been hustling like crazy out here, and I've got a lot of stuff lined up for us for when we come out here together on your bye week. You're a wanted man out here in Cali, bro. I'll get you the details later on, though. Why be in one of the things up?